This is a tank museum restoration workshop. A uh, current project we're working on is the Matilda Mark II infantry tank. We've just basically completed what the Americans would call the teardown phase, where we start investigating the problems that accrued on the vehicle over time. As you can see now, we're down to a bare hole. The turret has been removed, engines out, all the other systems have been dismantled. Some of the suspension components are just here. Um, we've really located most of the major faults, we think. As I say, we're now starting to go through the process of rectifying them. Uh, as in all restoration projects, you start off thinking you know all the faults with them, and then it gradually gener degenerates or <laughs> gets worse. As you uh, investigate all the systems, you usually find more trouble. We think we've basically got to, to the crux of the matter now, and we know what all the faults are, so we're going to proceed and put them all right, hopefully. It will be quite a long project. We've already been working on it approximately 18 months uh, to get it down. Um, the first major problem that manifested itself uh, a couple of years back was a, a gearbox fault. Um, once we investigated that, we realised the gearbox actually needed a complete rebuild with new component manufacture, which we're just starting to do now. And so we proceeded from that to investigate the rest of the vehicle systems, steering, suspension, engines, etc., um, which have revealed quite a few faults, unfortunately, but it's the sort of thing you expect with a vehicle of this age. As you can see, when you take a Matilda apart, or any tank for that matter, you end up with a lot of components. And this is our component store from the vehicle that we've dismantled. Just plant a few of the items. On this footage here, we have a, one of the final drive assemblies. Next door to it is the second final drive. I'll just move around the back here. A stack of parts here. These are the engine and gearbox decking assemblies. And the large tank assembly is the auxiliary fuel tank off the rear of the vehicle. Um, we would never run the vehicle off that, but we do want it for completeness. Lower stillage there has uh, clutch and cross drive components. The cross drive is the mechanism that joins the two power plants together. Matilda is driven by two engines, uh, driving on a common gearbox. Uh, controls and some of the air system in this stillage and the electrical system in the top stillage. Just as an example of the, the systems in the vehicle, this is part of the cooling system, one of the water pipes. You may look at a, a fairly peculiar shape. The reason that it's been flattened just there is that that is how close it runs to the gearbox in the vehicle. When that's bolted into the, fitted into the vehicle, the gearbox is sitting just about there on top of it. So this shape, beautiful piece of the coppersmith's art that she made that. It's a magnificent bit of coppersmithing. Copper, because it's a cooling system, it gives it the resilience, etc. One of the reasons, it, can we see a, an uncleaned pipe just there, and you notice these have been cleaned, is that we do need to check, because copper does work hard and over time, that there's any cracks formed in any of it, because we wouldn't want to put the whole, as I say, where that goes in the vehicle. It's very difficult to get out once you've put it in. You don't want to find a, a leak in it, in through a crack or something like that, once you've put it back in. So the reason for why they've all been cleaned is to inspect them basically and all I say all of this pipe work is in the engine compartment some of it is coolant some of it is oil and some of it is fuel uh, drains and supply pipes and so you can these little smaller pipes they're all part of the oil system the pinion gear which actually bolts to that flange on the assembly all of that is one piece of metal so it's all been made out of a casting and then machined once again, you've got the drive sprockets, bearings, the bearings of exhibit and signs of wear, so we'll replace these roller bearings. Just get that one out for you, it's a large roller bearing. You can see that the cages are worn, that the races are worn on the inside. You see where it's, it's gone dull compared to the shiny part there. That, that's, you, that's the wear part, so it's usually, when you get to that sort of stage, you're, it's getting pretty near to uh, being worn out. One thing we will have to just look at very carefully is that that is one of the oil seal assemblies from the final drive, um, which is, is actually made out of a leather seal with a, with a brass and copper expander. Um, we will probably have to replace this with a modern extruded uh, polypropylene or something like that, and then uh, basically disassemble this and reassemble it. In this box here, we have a lot of the engine components. Uh, we've stripped one engine completely, we will get round to doing the other one as well. Um, they are showing signs of wear because they're 75 years old. The 
these are the head gaskets which we'll source and replace and all the rest of the components will be cleaned, oil pumps cleaned etc and then when the engine's been reassembled we'll run it on a, on a static test rig before we assemble it and put it back in the vehicle. These two assemblies in this stillage here are the rack and steering clutches. They basically work by disconnecting the power to which side you want to steer on the vehicle. <coughs> During the disassembly we found some damage to them. This particular plate as you can see has lost one of its teeth and there is a crack through the metal plate. It consists of a stack of uh, friction material and metal material, metal plates. Uh, and basically the, the, the clutch is, is applied or dis disconnected to steer the vehicle. <coughs> These components will have to be replaced with new parts. Um, altogether we found four broken components. So these will all have to be sourced in the correct material, which we have now um, <coughs> found because the, fortunately we've got a world-class archive at the Tank Museum. They still have the uh, Matilda specification book, which gives you a list of all the materials that the vehicle is manufactured from. So we know exactly the type of steel that this plate is made from, and therefore we can get it reproduced by a modern manufacturer. For the components we need to inspect and replace are these, these are the engine clutch plates. Uh, two on the vehicle because the power plant consists of two engines uh, running together on a common gearbox. Uh, as you can see, if you just we've got a lot of wear on the clutch plates there down to the rivet heads almost. So these all these friction material needs to be replaced. Again, the whole thing will have to be thoroughly cleaned, the spigot bearing sorted out, uh, check all the springs, etc. Here we have a pallet which is containing uh, one of the final drive assemblies with the drive sprocket and the gearing. Uh, one of the things you learn as you're doing these restoration projects is sometimes fitters do modifications which quite often do then get incorporated into production vehicles. Here we discovered that the sprocket rings are actually cut in half. We think this is originally a fitter modification, fits onto the, the drive sprocket there. That's the tooth ring that drives the track. The, where it's installed on the vehicle, it's a, quite a difficult operation to remove that sprocket we think this probably originated as a fitter modification and this particular one's definitely been cut with a gas axe but with reference to the vehicle spare parts they are later supplied in two halves um, okay that's just a little historical note but there's a practical reason for it um, it just helps you to change the drive sprockets which are wear parts and do wear quite considerably on the vehicle so it's an easy quick fix